not recording for a second. Okay. No, <laughs> I am recording. Stop singing. Okay. At this point, you should just not concern yourself with anything I'm saying and just be quiet for the like next half hour. He's good. He didn't even answer that time. Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Margaret Ellis Raymond. I'm an author and I was born with tricuspid atresia. I haven't done a video like this in a long time, so I figured I would get in front of the camera and chat. Chat about what? Well, today I'm going to be talking about a general cardiology visit and what it's like. If you're born with a congenital heart defect, you are going to be seeing a cardiologist pretty regularly. A cardiologist is somebody who specializes in the heart. Well, a doctor who specializes in the heart. And there's also even more specialized doctors out there who also focus on congenital heart conditions particularly. The best case scenario is having a cardiologist who knows what they're talking about when it comes to CHD. And there's a couple of resources that you can use to find that out. Um, and I've put those resources in the description of this video. If anyone knows of any other resources, please let me know. So what is a general cardiology visit like? A general cardiology visit is going to be slightly different for everybody depending on what heart condition you have. For me, my general appointment is I show up not at a hospital, but I show up at like an off-site clinic essentially, which is specific for patients with congenital heart defects and they have cardiologists on board there who know about CHD. So I go to this clinic. For me, my schedule is once a year. When I was younger, I used to go every six months. When I show up, you know, I sign in, they always have me fill out the paperwork, just like when you go for your annual physical and I fill out the paperwork of like, I'm not smoking or yes, I'm smoking or, you know, what, just general questions like that. Once you fill that out, you wait in the waiting room. My waiting room has a lovely fish tank um, that just keeps growing algae, but whatever. I mean, they're heart doctors, not necessarily <laughs> fish tank cleaning wizards. So <laughs> once I stare at the fish for a little while, I get called back into the uh, examination room. Before we go to the examination room, they have me step on a scale. So they get my weight and then they also get my height. At that point, after you've been weighed and measured, or a nurse brings me into a examination room and they get a EKG all set up. What on earth is an EKG? All that is is they put some stickies on your chest and on your legs and sometimes like on the inner parts of your arm. I think it might be the inner parts of your arm. This is arm in general, wrist. I don't actually remember where they put all the leads, but they put leads. They're kind of these sticky little pads um, and they're, they've gotten better over the years. I remember when I was younger, the those sticky parts for the EKG were really, really sticky and very unpleasant to take off. And now they're kind of gummy and just stick to the skin and peel right off and it doesn't hurt, it doesn't pull skin. Um, they're, it's pretty chill. So the little clip gets stuck onto the end of the non-sticky part of the sticky pad. I'm totally using the wrong words, but you know, the, the visuals will help. Somehow, I don't know how the machine really works, but it records it and it gives a uh, visual, which is that fancy uh, line that most people see, which is basically just an EKG um, reading. So at this point, I've signed paperwork, I have been measured, I have been weighed, and I have had an EKG. All of that information is then given to the cardiologist. They review it, they see how I'm doing, they look at my chart, and then they come into the examination room and talk to me. And that discussion could be any of my concerns that I personally have been feeling. That conversation could be any concerns that the cardiologist has for me. Um, it could be based on age, so when I hit you know, 16, the conversation of having kids came up. Yeah, those conversations happen uh, at that point, um, and it's definitely based on age. So if you're older in years, they're gonna start talking to you about 
you should probably exercise a little bit more. Work-life balance definitely is a conversation that you have with your cardiologist more so than with your PCP. Just because your cardiologist is really trying to help you live the best life that you can with your condition and letting them know all of the facts and how you're feeling and your energy levels is really important. So at this point in the conversation, that's what you're talking to your cardiologist about. And then the cardiologist will talk to you about their concerns. So if they're seeing something on the EKG, if they're noticing like, oh, we haven't done a heart cath in a long time. If you want to learn more about all the follow-up care procedures that cardiologists might have uh, a patient with CHD complete, definitely check out, sorry, there's a car outside. Definitely check out a video that I posted a while ago about follow-up care and tricuspid atresia. All of the follow-up care in that video is specific to me and my experience, so it might not be the same for you. So now that we're done talking to the cardiologist, they say, great, nice to see you. Now we're going to do an echo. An echocardiogram is uh, basically like an ultrasound for your heart. You know when a woman is pregnant and they go in for an ultrasound and they put the goop on their stomach and they can see the baby? That is essentially what a cardiologist does, but for the heart. At this point, the cardiologist leaves the room. You have to take off everything, bra included if you're a woman, and you wear this weird, like, barely covers anything kind of shirt, and then the cardiologist knocks on the door, they come in, and they say, all right, let's do our echocardiogram, and they put the goopy cold stuff on this wand, and then they stick it on your chest, and they, like, move it around, and you can see a visual of your heart beating in real time, which is really cool and you can always ask the cardiologist questions about what on earth you're seeing because otherwise you're just staring at it going what is it so i've asked my cardiologist a few times you know what's that what's this then he gave me some great answers so what's that thing that looks like it's flapping up so and that's down the, that's the main valve so the between the top and the bottom chamber i'll show it to you from a better view yeah that um so that's the mitral valve so left okay. atrium, left ventricle, aortic valve. Here's your tiny little right ventricle. Um, and that's small because that this valve on the opposite side, called the tricuspid valve, was a threat. Right, right, so didn't form. If you don't feel comfortable with your cardiologist, you have the right to search for a new one just like you have the right to search for a new PCP. You want to make sure that you and your cardiologist maybe are on the same side with a lot of different uh, issues or thought processes when it comes to your heart and your body and your lifestyle. Um, and you have the right to find a cardiologist that fits your needs. So now the echocardiogram is done. Uh, at this point, the cardiologist gives me a lab slip and says, go get a needle in you. I'm like, great, fun, wonderful. Um, I get real nervous in cardiology appointments because I know every single year the cardiologist is going to have me do blood work. And I do not like needles at all whatsoever. I don't faint, but I just do not like them. So if you didn't know this, you do not have to go to like an outside clinic to get your blood work done. You can go to like your PCP and show up with the lab slip and say, hey, I want you to draw my blood. Because I've always had better experience at my PCP than at like an outside clinic somewhere. So that is what an annual cardiology appointment is like, at least for me personally, that is what it is like. For you, it might be slightly different depending on what heart condition you have or what procedures you've had in the past. Well, I hope this video helped you and gave you some insights into what a normal uh, annual cardiology appointment is like. And if your cardiology appointment is different, definitely feel free to share that in the comment section. Connect with others in the CHD community by posting a comment, asking me a question. Feel free to subscribe, click the bell, like the video, and if you do none of those things, watching the video is a great way to support me. So, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time. There we go. There you go. What just happened? Oh. Ah! The plug. It's not plugged in correctly, okay. 
I thought we were having like a power outage or something. It was just me sitting on the extension cord. Well, putting my foot on the extension cord. Okay. All right, here we go. <laughs> 